Even a string s returns a number of palindromic substrings in it. A string is a palindrome when it reads the same backward as forward or left to right and right to left. A substring, a substring is a contiguous sequence of characters within the string. And now if we look at these examples, uh, we can see that these are all the substrings of uh, this, this string of characters, the individual characters, then a window of two side-by-side -side characters, and then the final set of three. And the number of palindromes here are four, palindromic substrings. So every individual character is a palindrome because it's the same left to right, right to left, because it's just one. Then these aren't, right? So they're in red. That's why they're in red. And these are, right? Because they read the same from left to right and right to left. Same with these Zs. And now what's interesting about this case is how these two look exactly the same. However, they represent this first and then this, this second window of two. And all six of them are palindromes. Now to solve this problem, we need to use a, a table, right? One of the, the, the easier ways you would explain the solution to this problem is with a table. So imagine we have this string to evaluate, p weep, p, p, p weep, whatever, right? I mean, visually we can see it's a palindrome, right? But how would we pro pro do this programmatically? And now just tying in with our dynamic programming series, um, series of videos, we, we are gonna use the bottom-up approach, it's the tabulation method. And it starts by creating this two-dimensional array of the length of the string. So in this case, the length of seven. And we can, I think we can look at that in code, like what it means to create that. Actually, let me. So we're gonna create this two dimensional array and fill everything with false. Now this is what we're gonna use. This count variable is what we're gonna use to count the number of palindromic substrings. And then we create this table of length, s dot length, right? S dot length by s of length, s by s dot length, and fill everything with false. And now in this case, because every individual character is a substring in and of itself, and every individual character is a palindrome by default, right? P is a palindrome, E is a palindrome, E itself is a palindrome, W, and so on. We're gonna set all the diagonals, the diagonal to true, because every di the diagonals here, the diagonal here represents each individual character as each individual character substring, right? Every substring of length one, right? And then we're gonna, well, the solution to this problem relies on growing that substring length from one, one to two to three up until the length of the word, right? Up until the length of the word, right? Which is, in this case, is seven. Right? So we're gonna take note of that. We're gonna increase, in, we're gonna use solutions for every substring of every, of every length from one, to seven okay so everything for length one is true right however everything of length two is not true and those are our base cases those two base cases one and two because for a substring of two to two you just compare it side by side so in this case we found that e and e and e and e between four and five and one and two are so are palindromes so we set those to two so e four and five, right? We look up that way, horizontally and then vertically. If you pay attention to my cursor, horizontally and then vertically, four and five represent four and five here, right? E and E. And then one and two here, right? Represent E and E. And setting that to true, right? This intersection to two, to true, means they are palindromes, as you can see visually. And so we're going to be growing that. And every time we set it to true, we increment count. So you see the, the count of palindromes have palindromic substrings. It went from seven, which is the diagonal here, seven characters, to nine, right? So we've considered length one. We've considered length of two, every substring of length two. Next, we are going to check out, check out three, right? What comes after two is three. And... Before we do that, let's look at the code up until this point, right? So remember, we have count of zero, starts out as zero. We create our two-dimensional array of, of two-dimensional length by length array of the word. 
of the, of the string of characters or word, then we set the diagonal. This is how we set the diagonals to true. So we just loop through everything up until the length, index at i and i, set it to true, and increment counts in the process, right? So we've covered the case of one, the length of one. Then this is our case of length of two. So for length of two, we do the same right iteration as you can see for one, but this time we oh, we set it so i and i plus one to whatever we get when we compare s index at i and x index index at i plus one, right? So, and I think that that's intuitive uh, in and of itself. So whatever we get, let's say we, i is one, dp at i and i plus one. Again, remember that. It's this intersection is also represented by just so I if, if I was E, I plus one is E again. So we set it to true as a result. And that is what uh, this line of this block of code does basically. And then it increments it. Oh boy. So this is a special thing. Let me hold off on this, right? Let me double down on this. So I hope this is clear. All right, the fact that oh, we're checking what follows I basically here. And then based on that, setting i and i plus one to that value. And then we've gone through every single substring of two that is two characters long in this loop by doing this. Right? We've gone through every single substring. Because again, they're contiguous side by side. Every single window of two is like windowing through the string two characters at a time. Right. And then setting that to based on what we see, right? Whether they're equal or not. Yeah. And then in this case. A Boolean value is added to the count where true means one and false means zero. And I think it comes back, even C++ behaves this way. If a value is true, because remember we're setting these to true or false up here. If it's true, it's one, right? It casts to one. So when you add one to one, right? It can up update to two or update to zero, right? Because if it's false, it's going to be zero, right? It's going to cast. So if you open your JavaScript console right now and say one plus true, it's going to return like a REPL in your Chrome or whatever. Is going to return two, and uh, there's no time. Otherwise, I get to it. Actually, the time I used to say there was no time, I could have gotten to it in that time. But I digress. Let's 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 take this home. So next, we've done everything of length two. Now we get into the end parts from three upwards, right? So from three and above, we're going to check every single substring of length three, right? So we're going to window three characters at a time using the previous results we had. Okay, and that's what this block does. I can notice you notice it's the final block, right? So we're uh, home home free, right? I'm seven minutes in, eight minutes in. I think you can get it in less than ten minutes. But so right now we're at nine. We're nine 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 uh, palindromic substrings. So now for three, the windowing becomes fancy. So we're evaluating every substring of length three, and we're gonna check the left and right of that string, right? And we're going to do this all the way up until our length. Remember, we're going to the length of the uh, string, which is in this case is seven, right? All the way up. But only that we're only going to be checking the left and right. What what characters on the left and right, right? Leftmost character and rightmost character. And we represent those with uh, cur these cursors, I and J. So for length three, the first window, I will be zero, J will be two, right? And what we're going to do, we're, we need two conditions, right? And these two conditions are going to apply for the rest of, the problem right the rest of the problem and so what are those two conditions the string at i and j need to be the same right for them to be a sub for them to be a palindrome they need to be the same and whatever was at was in between them that the, the characters in between them as well have to be a palindrome so the left and right most characters have to be palindromes and then whatever is in between right everything in between has to be a palindrome as well and so uh, in this case, right, we have zero and two. So P and E, you can notice they are not the same, right? Even though, even though E and E, E, right? That's character one, index at one. Remember, we'll, we look at it up this way. Even though this is true, because this is not true, we end up setting this to false. And this is what that looks like in code. So this checks I and J. So I and J, P and E, checks the check for P and E, right? S at zero, S at S at zero, right? S at two. That's what this is. This is checking. And then this increments I and decrements J. So incrementing I by one is one, right? It's gonna give us E. And J is one, it's gonna 
decrementing j was going to give us e as well. And we can see that that is true because it's a single character substring. So we're using that to find this. And because e, p, and e are not the same, we have false here. OK? I hope that is clear. I hope that makes sense. And so we keep windowing all the way to the end for the length of three. So you can see there's a loop inside of a loop. We're starting from three all the way up, up until s, s the length, incrementing that. And then in each case, we're modifying i and j until we reach the end when j is less than uh, s dot length. We increment both i and j right together, right? And do this check and then do, take advantage of that same quirk with JavaScript where true is one and false is zero to increment uh, count based on what we so we got here so so that's that about that that's all there is to this and this diagram shows it right so you can see i pick take, pay attention to i and j for we're dealing with length of three so you, you notice that but they both got incremented incremented i moved from zero to one j moved from two to three we're still at length of three so so as as you can see within the code here so we're still for that same length of three right we're, we're now looping within so we're just moving, windowing, and doing our computation until we get to the end. Then length moves on to four. Okay? So now i is at zero, j is at a length minus one, three. So that, that represents p and w here. And we're going to get false, right? Even though, even though if you increment i and decrement j, you get one and two. And one and two, even though one and two, which, is the, which represents e and e here, is true right as you can see right so we've checked this inside right inside pew it's true however the two characters here are false so we're going to set it to false and we don't need to now check e in the, on its own again right because we built that using that already so that's where we save computation and we keep going so the window keeps moving it's like a sliding it turns to like a sliding window problem of, of, of sorts okay the window keeps moving. So that's a length of four. Then it moves to five and so on. Right? So in this case, we're checking two and six, right? E, e, W, E, E, P, which I mean, visually is in a palindrome. So we already know. Then in this case, right? Length of six. So six characters long. And then finally, seven characters long, which is our final sweep. And then, so we check I. Actually, this is seven characters long. So if, if we increment i and decrement j, we get e, e, w, e, e, right? That's what's in between. And we can look that up, right, at um, one and five. So five, we can just say one here and five. And that's true. So because that is true and p and p, right, zero and six, what's indexed at zero and six are true, we know that this is in fact a pattern from programmatically. And then we're done. We're happy. We return counts and take it home. So time complexity, a loop inside a loop, n squared, we can guess it pretty much. And space complexity, because of the lookup table, the n by n lookup table, we say n squared as well. And that's all there is to this problem. Thank you.